me talk about something else that overstock does. We are not, if you know anything about overstock's history, you know that we are not big fans of Wall Street and the big banks, and we don't trust them. We foresaw the financial crisis. We fought against the upcoming financial crisis that happened in 2008, and then it happened. We don't trust the banks still. And we foresee that with QE3 and 4 and QEN, whatever the number is that you can think is big enough, that at some point there is going to be another significant financial crisis. So what do we do as a business so that we will be prepared when that happens? Let me tell you one thing we do that I think is fairly unique. We have about $10 million in gold, mostly precious metal, gold and silvers, mostly the small button-sized coins that we keep outside of the banking system. We expect that when there is a financial crisis, there will be a banking holiday. I don't know if it will be two days or two weeks or two months. But we have $10 million in gold and silver in denominations small enough. We've got some big bricks. I'll admit that. But we have a lot in denominations small enough that we can use for payroll. We <laughs> We want to be able to keep our employees paid, safe, and our site up and running during a time of financial crisis. We also happen to have three months of food supply for every employee plus one, so an employee plus a spouse or a partner, that we can, that we can live on. Now, that sounds pretty miraculous, I will admit, we sell freeze-dried food on our site. So when, you're, when you want to replenish your basement or whatever is underneath your, uh, uh, your bed, you can come buy that on Overstock. And so when we say we have three months extra food supply, we just keep more in stock than we otherwise would. But we never get it get so low that we couldn't have our employees fed and paid during a financial crisis. I think that that applies right to what UPMA's mission is. It's looking for a way to make gold and silver spendable. One of the things we're going to look at now, the more I've learned from Larry about what you do, is maybe we take our gold and silver buttons, we put them in UPMA, and we say we're going to have credit cards that we're able to give to our employees so they can be spent. Because even a button is going to be too much to buy a block of cheese at fresh market during a financial crisis. Anyway. <laughs> Again, that's the kind of foresight. I think that that's what this legal tender bill that Representative Galvez and others worked on. It's the foresight that Utah needs. I think that we can always agree to this sentence. Utah can do it better. We can do it better than the federal government. We can manage our lands better than the federal government can. We can decide what to teach our children better than the federal government can. We can certainly manage monetary policy better than the federal government can. Utah can do it better. Fiat dollars really have no intrinsic value at all unless you look at their trade as a currency. I mean, when I think of fiat dollars, maybe you could burn a stack of them and keep warm for a little bit. But other than that, their intrinsic value, not backed by gold, is nothing. Gold has some intrinsic value, different from currency. It's malleable. It conducts electricity. But when we think of the value of gold, it's not because of those things. It's because of its trade as a currency. Cryptocurrency has some of those traits. So let me talk about it. Let me talk about maybe 10 traits of currency. And when I, I'm going to talk about, think of four different kinds of currency. Think of fiat dollars. Think of gold, like a bar. 
Then think about gold as legal tender as UPMA has set it up. Because UPMA has created more intrinsic currency traits than gold actually, as a bar actually has. And then think of cryptocurrency. All of them have pluses and minuses among these traits. A good currency is fungible. It's interchangeable. Well, dollars are that. I'm going to use dollars for fiat currency. Gold is that. Legal tender gold is that, as is a cryptocurrency. They all do, they all score pretty high on that trait. The next trait is they're non-consumable. Salt, when it was a currency, had a problem. It was consumable. It got in water and it went away. Uh, All four of them work pretty well there. Dollars, gold, gold tender, and, uh, and cryptocurrency. It's easily portable. Well, what does well there? Cryptocurrency does really well. Here's my cryptocurrency right here. My whole bank account's right here. Gold legal tender does really well. You carry your Amex or your uh, debit card now. Gold as a bar, not so good. Not so good. Um, dollars, better than gold, but still not so good, right? Also, carrying across borders, really lousy, right? You get on a plane with a million dollars in a briefcase, you're going to be in trouble, right? You get in a, on a plane with a credit card of gold or your cryptocurrency, you're all right. It's durable. Gold does well there. Gold's really durable. Fiat dollars, poor. I took a tour two weeks ago of the uh, Federal Reserve Building downtown Salt Lake. They told me that the average dollar bill's life, 18 months. 18 months. They're replacing them all the time. No wonder we're printing so much. If we could only just repl replacement dollars instead of replacement plus new dollars. Uh, cryptocurrency, gold is a legal tender, uh, durable. Highly divisible. Cryptocurrency is really good there. So is gold is legal tender. You can have a big brick of gold, put in your UPMA account, and spend it to buy a Slurpee at 7-Eleven. You could spend it to buy something that costs less than a penny if they would charge that on your card. Gold, the brick, not so good. Dollars, OK. Uh, they're OK on being highly divisible. Secure and not counterfeitable. Dollars, not so good. OK, but not great. Gold, not great. It's counterfeitable. People are fooled by it. But gold, as a legal tender, someone else is taking the counterfeit risk for you. Larry's taking the counterfeit risk for you. When you deposit it with him, you now have non-counterfeit non spendable money on your card. Cryptocurrency, thus far, non-counterfeitable. Um, easily transactable. Dollar bill's pretty easy. You can go to any store and spend it. Gold, not so easy. UPMA gold, really easy. Really easy. In fact, easier today, I learned, than you can use it in places that don't expect accept Amex. You can use it in a debit card place. Cryptocurrency, kind of. Not, if you want to do all your shopping on Overstock, very easy. <laughs> if you want to do it elsewhere, maybe not quite so easy. Um, Scarce. Scarce is a true trait of currency. Dollars? Not at all. It's fiat money. And it's not capped. That's why we keep printing it. That's what the QE system is. Gold? Scarce. Gold is legal tender? Scarce. Cryptocurrency? Fiat. But Bitcoin is capped at 21 million coins. About 14 million have been mined. Fiat, but fixed cap, so it meets scarce. Here's something else that used to be a positive and now is a negative. Sovereign. Is it backed by a federal government? 
That used to be a positive, but as we've gone off the gold standard and we've gone on to the print standard, that's a negative. The dollar has a character trait as being sovereign that's a negative. Gold, non-sovereign. It's a plus. Cryptocurrency is a plus. UPMA is a plus. These are things that I think make what you're doing here, you're taking something that had a lot of gold, a lot of things in the plus column, and a few in the minus column, and taking their minus traits and bringing them into the plus column. I think what UPMA is doing and what the Legal Tender Act does are awesome. We're moving on. Yes. We're moving away. We're, ge we're getting to a currency that has more and more and more positive traits. The U.S. dollar has more and more negative traits.